Okay, so we know we conserve energy in general, but it gets lost in unusable forms. Mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energy for an object. And we have other non-mechanical energies that are less easy for us to measure in, in this context. <clears throat> Would your jumpers yesterday have had more than gravitational potential energy? Would they? Were they attached to any sort of um, elastic material that stored energy? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. You were dealing, I mean, that's a complicated mechanical energy problem because you've got multiple forms of potential energy. And this is, we talked briefly about the fact that with the jumpers, I think the same thing comes in with that net versus total potential energy because the gravitational potential energy and the elastic potential energy are working in two opposite directions. You also have momentum, which one group, um, to great advantage, tried to work in, but it gets complicated. So all of these other forms of energy, uh, molecular energy, chemical energy, electrical, um, nuclear, the internal energy of you know, cells, those are non-mechanical. We cannot as easily capture those. If you go on into chemical engineering, you will work with chemical energy and you'll do equations with it, but we're not, it's way beyond our pay grade. If we had no conversion to non-usable energy, and what is, what is the thing that's converting it to non-usable energy? Mostly friction, largely friction. Um, if there was no friction, if we didn't have sound being generated by objects, then we would conserve mechanical energy, but that doesn't happen. If we did conserve mechanical energy perfectly, then the mechanical energy that we start with would be the final mechanical energy, what we end with. But, like we said, energy bleeds out of the system. We get noise, we get um, bright lights, we get energy coming out of a system. Has anybody ever seen metal on metal generate sparks? Okay. Those sparks, the energy that it took to ignite small molecules, that represents a loss of mechanical energy. Light, sound, those are the result of friction, and they're, they're a representation of a um, loss of mechanical energy, usable energy. So if this is just a little bit, ignore it completely. When we do that, <laughs> So, when does the conservation of mechanical energy not apply? In a system where we're losing a ton of energy to friction. You know, in this system, we lost, in a fairly short amount of time, we lost sufficient energy due to friction with air that the whole thing came to a stop. There is no perpetual motion machine. So there are lots of situations where we can't do this, but there are some where, especially at the level that we do things in high school physics, we can fudge the numbers enough that we can actually, um, we can actually use that conservation of energy equation. So if, you know, don't ever talk about the loss of energy, but you can sure talk about the loss of mechanical energy or the loss of usable energy. What does using this allow us to do? Well, we're going to look at that on um, page 184, sample problem 5e. So what we are using is the conservation of mechanical energy, which says that MEI equals MEF, which means we should probably define what MEI is. So mechanical energy initial is equal to her Potential energy due to gravity initial plus her kinetic energy initial and MEF is equal <coughs> to her potential energy due to gravity initial plus, or I'm sorry, final, plus her kinetic energy final. Okay, seems straightforward enough. What that means is we're setting these things equal. So potential energy due to gravity initial plus kinetic energy initial is equal to the potential energy due to gravity final plus the kinetic energy final. Well, I guess we better uh, start listing some variables. So her mass is 25.0 kilograms. 
Her initial height is 3.0 meters. Her final height at the bottom of the slide would be 0 meters. Remember, it's all relevant, it's all relative to um, our arbitrary zero point. Okay, so that's what we've got. Is there anything there that we don't have? No, we've got it all. So her initial height, her final height, what's her initial velocity? Zero. Final velocity, wouldn't you like to know? So the nice thing is that this allows us, because we know that the final height is zero, every, she has no potential gravity at the end. That disappears. That's hugely helpful. We know that her um, initial velocity is zero. That disappears. So what we're left with is mass, gravity, initial height equals one-half mass, final velocity squared. We solve this for Vf. Let's do our solve before we plug in any numbers. Okay, so if we divide both sides by m, hey, our m's cancel out. We have gh equals one-half vf squared. So it didn't even matter what her mass was. So we have two times that. So for our final solve, v times initial height equals vf squared. Initial height was three meters. Square root of two times 9.81 meters per second squared times three meters equals VF. What do you notice when you do the dimensional analysis for that? Meters per second squared times meters take the square root. What do you end up in? Meters per second, which is what we want. 1.67 meters per second, whoops, not squared, meters per second is her final velocity. Now let me ask you, She's on a sliding board. Is that a vector? If we were doing her angle, yeah, it is. That is a, a vector velocity. She is, you know, we assume that this is not the world's only sloped sliding board and it's not straight down, but um, she's three meters above the ground. We're able to ignore the fact that these are vectors because mechanical energy doesn't care. This is where you're going to get incredibly um, irritated because remember all those pelican problems where we have horizontally launched projectiles and we have pelicans dropping fish over water and how fast is the fish going if the pelican's going this fast? Yeah, guess what? You can do all that with mechanical energy and never have to worry about the vectors. Son of a... Grah! Yep, it's just like calculus, where you learn the really hard way and then you learn the shortcut. You can do it all with mechanical energy. There are limits to that. There are places where you can't use the mechanical energy shortcut, but boy, is it a nice little backdoor. <laughs> so all of the problems for this section, this is 5D, 5E, 5E, are assigned. Go ahead and get started, get working. You can get a couple done. You can screenshot the answers. And that's what we got.